welcome to this week's Fundamentals. My name is Thomas, I'm the host of this channel. This week I want to discuss use case decentralized applications. So what are these? So decentralized applications are actually replacing centralized applications. Think about Facebook in social media, Dropbox in storage space, Amazon in retail. There is already decentralized applications that are replacing YouTube, Facebook, Instagram, Twitter. And in this video, I want to discuss those examples. So with that said, let's jump into this week's video. So I'll start with this overview. Here you see Web 2.0 apps and here you see Web 3.0 D apps. D apps standing for decentralized applications. So here on the left side, currently everyone is using Google. Brave is the decentralized browser. Then for storage space, here we see Dropbox and Google Drive. And here we see storage and IPFS. So for video calls, now we use Skype and a decentralized version is Experty. For operating systems, it's Android and iOS, and decentralized is Essentia and EOS. Then for social network, we have Facebook, Twitter as current, uh, centralized web 2.0 apps, and decentralized Steemit and Akasha. Uh, messaging, we have WhatsApp, and decentralized it's status. Remote jobs, we have currently Up or Fiverr, and currently uh, decentralized is Atlas. So a few of them I will, uh, I will explain and also a few ones that are not mentioned in this overview. So let's start off with Brave. So Brave is a decentralized browser. So instead of what Google does is receiving your data and selling it to a third party and make a profit, what Brave does is they collect your data and with your approval, they will sell it to a third party and you will earn uh, a big cut out of that. So you can now earn money with your own data. I'm, I've been using Brave for more than a year right now. I'm very happy with the speed and I'm also happy with the returns. I mean, it's only $2 per month, but it's a $2 extra that you're not earning while using Google. Plus my data is safe. So those are the two big pluses. Then we go to Steemit. So I already have an account. I also have a couple of years of experience on Steemit. And this is a decentralized Twitter, Facebook, let's say, because you can add pictures and you can write. What is important to know is that this is on the blockchain. So whatever you write is saved and you're not able to change it. So if you make any spelling mistakes, they will be forever on the blockchain. So how does this work? So every day there is a pool of Steam available. So Steam is the crypto token that you can convert into dollars. From this pool of Steam, I have the voting power to allocate it to good content creators. So I can assign by clicking here the, the green button and then that person, if I had more power, would get more money. So if I am a very influential person, the person can get more money with my vote. But my vote within Steemit is not very, um, very strong. As you can see, it only added up two cents to the... To the content creator. So what you get right then is that people that actually create good content that people enjoy reading are getting paid more and people that have bad content that nobody really uh, enjoys, they get out of the platform because they don't get paid. So I think the community decides what is good content, what is not. So here you can get paid for adding good content without a third party taking away your cuts. Then there is also DTube. DTube is um, the competitor of YouTube, the decentralized form of um, YouTube. And it actually works the same as Steemit. So every day there is a pool of money available that the more voting power you have, so the better of a content writer you are, the more voting power you have within the community. Uh, make sure that you check it before you post it. So then we go to storage. Storage is a decentralized Dropbox or a decentralized Google Drive. So instead of for a big quantity of data paying Google Drive or paying Dropbox, hereby you can pay actually the person that saves the data for you. 
So how your data is saved? It's saved in shards. So your data will be like a puzzle divided over a lot of people that want to earn money by giving storage space. So they don't have access to your data. Only you have the key to all the data shards. So you pay the people that store the data for you and you can use it anytime. So you pay the person that stores your data instead of the company that stores your data. So you can also earn a passive income by um, adding hardware to your computer and store data for storage. Then we go to Teda and Teda is really the decentralized option of streaming. So how does it work? Viewers can earn rewards as Teta fuel for sharing excess bandwidth and resources. So the bandwidth that you have on your computer, but you're not using, you share it with the community. Viewers are now rewarded to participate in the network. So I do this and currently I have a, a nice return and it's also just a few dollars per month for now. Higher quality, smoother video streaming. A decentralized peer-to-peer -peer network delivers streams efficiently globally. So currently the streaming platforms have a lot of problems with providing quality and lags and this would should be able to remove those lags from the streaming services. It also reduces cost of delivery of video streaming. Video platforms no longer need to build expensive infrastructure, it means more innovation and unique business models. So again, it's peer to peer. So somebody provides bandwidth and gets paid for that. So they are able to use the bandwidth of people that are not using it. So it's also more efficient. Then permission.io. So permission.io is more or less also a brave, although it's not a browser, you can you get paid for watching promote promotions that are actually meant for you. So see it as an Amazon and a, and a, and a brave. So with the points that you get by watching targeted advertisements, you're able to go to the shop and actually buy stuff with it. So, so far I already collected 1530 ask, which is the ask token. And in store, I would already be able to buy something with it. Something very small, but I would be able to buy something with it. Here you see bottles of 22,000 ask, and you have multiple uh, parts. You have apparel, electronics, gift card, permission, posters. So it's a, again, a decentralized way of earning a passive income and you can already spend it directly on the platform as well. Then I wanted to go to Helium, uh, a platform that I already made a video about before. So Helium actually wants to compete with uh, wireless networks. So they want to compete with a Vodafone, with uh, T-Mobile and other big telecom providers but based on the internet, so on the wireless revolution. So instead of using these centralized companies and uh, depend on their wireless infrastructure, Helium gives everyone the opportunity to be part of this infrastructure. So you can buy hardware and be part of the internet connection. And when the network gets used, you're the one that gets paid for the usage of the network. So again, it's a decentralized form of putting a middleman outside. Then as final, we have Audius. So Audius is a platform where you can actually earn a passive income on your music. So instead of Spotify or SoundCloud, this is actually decentralized. So instead of this middleman, which is SoundCloud or Spotify, this is without a middleman. So this means that the musician can make more money with his music and actually the user like me paying less because you cut out this middleman. So there is obviously way more examples than the examples that I used in this video. Let me know in the comments which applications you also really enjoy, which decentralized applications are really working well for you. If you like this content, please like and subscribe and I hope to see you next week. Bye.